Being a scientist, a basic scientist, is exhilarating. We dedicate our blood, sweat, and tears sometimes to uncover small hidden mysteries of the world that we live in using rigorous techniques and quantitative tools. And our mission is to share these small advancements, these small contributions to the world to enrich the awe and knowledge in society. And the way that we do this primarily is through a document like this, which is for scientists a beautiful tool to engage with other scientists in an unbiased way to communicate our results. But to the public, it's a very ob obtruse, very opaque, hard to get through, really difficult to understand, and inaccessible. Probably 12 scientists will read this, and nobody from the public will. If we want to take it further, we can take our research on the road with wordy posters at conferences for other scientists, which again is great to communicate our results for scientists. But scientists ourselves at this level are really creative people. You have to be creative to be able to generate these hypotheses, make sense of your observations, design tools to ask questions. And so to take advantage of this problem, or sorry, to solve this problem of communicating our results to the public, the solution I've created is a curriculum that I train scientists to use art to express their own research. I call it artistic expression of original research, where I train scientists to tell the narrative of their research, create something beautiful, and express their emotions. And this is important because typically scientists uh, engage with their data using rationale and logical dimensions. But here, we introduce an aesthetic dimension, which can connect people with emotions, which is really how people learn and how people stick that knowledge and remember things. So here's the program in action. We have scientists, graduate students, postdocs, technicians. And here we have Russell, who is displaying his prototype neuron that he just 3D printed uh, to a class. We brainstorm our research, come up with prototypes. We invite professional artists and designers to share their techniques and give direct feedback to the students. Students go through iterations of their projects using many different techniques, all different kinds of media, and the results are stunning, just as beautiful and diverse as the research behind them. And we display this research in a public gallery, downtown Phoenix and the first Friday Art Walk and a prominent gallery in the Art District where on the opening night we received over a thousand public walkers by where research researchers stood by their art pieces explaining their research, why it's important and why people should care, which was an incredible experience both for the scientists and for the audience breaking the mold of the stereotype of an antisocial lab-wearing scientist and getting them out to the public. I'd like to illustrate this using an example from my own work. I study these beautiful Cecropia trees. If you look closely, you can see they're teeming with ants. These are Azteca ants. They're very fierce. They protect the tree from things like herbivores, katydids, grasshoppers, vines even. But they don't do it for free. The tree provides them with nutrients by way of these little food bodies. And if you slice the tree open, you can see it's hollow and then the ants actually live inside of the tree. If you shake the tree, the ants will pour out in defense. And where my research comes in is I study the difference in behavior of the collective you can see this tree on the right, after I've shaken it, has a much stronger response than the tree on the left. And these are colonies of the same size, the same height. They have different collective personalities. So I wanted to express the narrative of this collective personality using the beautiful structure of the tree and expressing this emotion of 
almost a magical interactive piece. By shaking the tree, you can see the ants come out. So I created Tree of the Glowing Symbiont, where I have the lights of this tree synchronized with the patrolling data of the ants on the tree. And because I'm looking at the difference between colonies, I created a whole forest. Five trees in total, where the audience can walk amongst the trees and see the difference in behavior of those ants themselves. I don't even have to explain them. They can see the blinking patterns between the trees are different. And my favorite part is you can walk up to these trees, and I've outfitted them with a vibrational sensor. So you can shake the trees, and they respond with the data of the colonies that actually responded to the vibration. So through this example, uh, it's been shown to have a lot of impact on the public, it was shown in a gallery for four months in Phoenix. And I can see this program uh, being, it has been institutionalized at ASU, now being offered every fall semester um, for scientists. And I could see this program being offered at other major universities uh, across the US and across the world. Thank you.